Right now we're sitting down here with uh, Richard from Flex UK, uh, who very kindly um, escorted us down here today. I'd just like to take a moment before we start just to speak to Avis rent -a car Direct. A Golf and a Kia are not similar cars. So don't, don't try that. It was, only, it was only a 30 kilometer drive down from uh, Stuttgart and it was okay, but it's not, it's not quite the same in the grand scheme of things. Obviously. It does have a seven year warranty. So seven year warranty, yeah, well, that's not too trip, bad. So. We'll get onto warranties in a moment. So okay. just to start with, um, introduce yourself to us and what you, what you do for Flex UK. Okay, well my name's Richard Jones and I am a regional sales manager for Flex in the UK. So my job consists of um, looking after our network of dealers within my region um, selling our new products, um, supporting the dealers while selling, uh, helping them with uh, trade shows, product training, support, and basically anything flex I'm there to, to assist them with or help them with uh, and help try and de develop their business. Okay, so I mean, anybody who's bought a, a flex tool, uh, if they're having any issues with it, are, are you the person to contact? Through, through um, they can either contact the, the place they bought it or they're more than happy to contact uh, anyone at Flex um, and we would give them our um, UK warranty centre. We have an approved UK warranty centre. What we feel is when you buy into Flex, you're, you're buying the tool, but you're also buying the service as well. Um, for us, the, the service we offer doesn't stop the day you walk out the shop. We offer a really good warranty repair service. Um, a lot of other manufacturers do struggle with warranty repairs, but our partners, J Mac and Derby, offer a very quick repair service and we get the tool back to you um, in a very short period of time. The other thing they'll do as well is if your tool's out of warranty, you can send your tool back to them and have it serviced. I do know of some detailers in the UK who, have, who, who pride themselves on, on their quality flex tool and they send it back in just to have it serviced and make sure mm -hmm. it's, it's healthy and will continue running at its optimum performance for the rest of it, its, its lifespan. Mm. I have to give a big thumbs up to J Mac. Um, I think about three or four years ago, I, I had a sl very slight issue with a, a VRG and no questions were asked, immediate uh, turnaround. It came back as good as new. They're a fantastic warranty centre yep. for you. So obviously you're a big power tool company, you have a huge range of products. Is it something like 150-odd products? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Massive amounts of uh, stock to hold. Um, detailing aside, what's your, what's your most popular product overall, would you say? I'd probably say our building and renovation range um, would be our giraffe uh, uh, wall and ceiling sander. Um, in the UK, it's probably most used for the dry lining industry, um, for tapers and jointers. Um, uh, and again, a bit like the name Flexen, the giraffe is, 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 is a name brand that's trademarked to Flex. So a lot of our companies will turn, will turn around and make their own version of the giraffe, but you are the original. Yes, if exactly, you like. exactly, yes. And the giraffe's actually really cool to look at. It's, it's basically a, a sander on a very long pole that's... Uh, exactly, so it's a long reach here. sander, yeah. And um, we also sell dust extractors that go al alongside of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that probably comes into our building and renovation um, arena that we deal with. We also now are having a big push and, and getting a lot of interest on our new brushless cordless tools. Mm -hmm. um, the same cordless technology that's used with the, the new PE14-2150 uh, rotary polisher and the XFE 150 ro not rotary. Dual action. Dual action, yeah. that's the one. So um, uh, with our interchangeable battery system, we are, we are, we're constantly thriving to get more tools into the market and soon we will have a lot, a lot bigger range of cordless tools, not only in polishing, but in building and renovation. Um, for example, the saw here, mm -hmm. this is our new uh, 18 volt circular saw, um, which can be used in the building and renovation industry, or even uh, we have some customers using it in the stone industry as well. Nothing in the NHS yet though? Not yet, not yet, no. Make surgery not yet. Quicker. It would do, it would do. It would a lot do. briefer anyway. <laughs> well, you could use one of our wet and dry dust extractors as well. Oh, fantastic. Just yeah. clear everything up. Exactly. Oh, that's a good so. point. Um, in terms of the detailing industry itself, though, what, what would you say is the, the most popular product that you do for, for the industry? I think our best-selling polisher in the UK would be the XC3401 VRG. Mm -hmm. The forced rotation. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, the Flex are always looking at, uh, we take the detailing industry very seriously in the UK. Um, as you can see, we've spent a lot of money in R&D. We've invested a lot of money with the new cordless tools. Uh, we're the first company to ever launch a 18-volt um, cordless free-spinning polisher, mm -hmm. the XFE. Um, and hopefully we'll be remembered for that, as we are remembered for the invention of the angle grinder. So um, the research and development um, 
and the new tools we have have for the detailing industry just proves how important that we we feel this market is to us. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, where where can somebody wants to come try out the tools? Though? Where where can they come and find you? Yeah, well, um, we do support a lot of um, trade shows, both for wholesalers and dealers. Uh, we do do some end user shows. Um, you will usually find us at Waxstock, where um, you can come and try the polishes out, have a hands-on experience. Um, the other option you've got is to visit our website, www.flex-tools.com. On there, you can see geographically our list of dealers. Um, and you could give them a quick ring, see if they are uh, automotive, if you wanted to, it depends which tool you want to look at, but um, you can usually tell by the name of the company which, which market they, they deal with, but give them a ring and see if it's possible to come in and, and try one of the tools or have a, have a feel of the tool and mm -hmm. see, just see how, how well designed they are, how well made they are and how ergonomically designed they are for, for, for their tailored market. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Thanks very much for bringing us down here. We're going to go on our tour now. Um, we look forward to seeing more from Flex this year. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. We are coming to the end of our day here at Flex, and we thought we were going to start getting some pretty serious technical detail on. And I put the shout out to Gerst and the other people here and said, who's, who's the most um, knowledgeable on your battery technology? Because this is something that uh, our features editor, Ian and myself, did a little video with these new battery polishers. And the thing is that we, we don't know very much. So what we need is, is, a, is a boffin, a crazy scientist. Um, and introducing Ralph. Well, Ralph, what is your actual title? I'm guessing boffin isn't, isn't the real one. I'm the, I'm the application engineering in Flex. I've worked there for more than eight years. I'm doing the application engineering, doing the uh, product management a part of them, and also doing our training sessions in Flex for internal, but also for international sales teams. So if we concentrated at school, that's the sort of thing we could do when we grow yep, up. Exactly. Very clever. Um, and what I really want to do is get into the nitty gritty of batteries. Now we've had quite a lot of feedback on uh, battery technology and when we were uh, introduced these, we had a, a polarization. So half the people watching it said, oh, I don't need a battery thing. I've got a lovely unit and I never need a cable. And then the other half were actually I'm mobile uh, or I'm just in a, in a unit with lots of cables all over the place. I would love to use one of these. So what I really, really wanted to do um, was go through in more detail on the, um, the actual battery tech that you've got here and why your battery system is really, really clever. So um, we've managed to cut one of these back. Um, it was quite dangerous, isn't it? Because these, these lithium batteries can no, be... it's not really quite dangerous now because everything is protected. Everything is full protected, nothing good happens. It is full charged, but it doesn't matter. Even if I lick <laughs> this bit? If you connect them both together, then yes. it could be a Ouchy. little bit. Yep. <laughs> One thing I want to put across here is the sheer power. This small object here is packed full of lithium, which is, is the latest sort of battery tech uh, that we all know about. And it can put up at 80 amps. Yep. can come out of this. Now, to put that in perspective, a mains powered machine, in terms of the current it draws, admittedly at 240 volts, is going to be maximum 15, maybe 20 amps in a, in a grinder or something. Yep. So this is putting out at least four times the current. And bear in mind, the current is fun. As a human being, you can have 50,000 volts put through you and you're fine, but a 0 0.01 of an amp can kill you if it's in the wrong place. So amps are fun um, in a kind of dangerous way. Um, so tell me what is so clever about this thing? If you have a look at it, there is a monitor uh, basis on the tap. There is a computer chip. You know it from your personal computers and he's watching and monitoring everything on the battery. So that means the amps are always under control. If you match more then ATMs, it will stop no more currently yeah. immediately. So no, no, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen to the tool. Nothing will happen to the end user. And also the batteries and the cells, they are not becoming over, overheated and they are not exploding. So everything is safe because it's monitored. Mm -hmm. And monitored is every single cell. Every single cell, in this case there are two layers. T uh, one layer is two and a half ampere hours. Two layers is five ampere hours. And every single cell is monitored by this microchip. And this chip, um, just we'll do some close-ups and stuff, but this clip literally looks like a Pentium 3 processor from back in the days. Yep. Um, and it's, it's got all the transistors on there. And it's, it's quite a clever piece of kit. And you're saying it monitors how many times a second? <laughs> every single second, every tenth of a second, and it's monitoring the temperatures. It's te uh, monitoring the currency. And 
everything around the batteries. And that's what, what's really clever about this, is this data is obviously computerized on that chip, but it's also communicated. So we have three prongs here, one's plus and minus, obviously, for the power, and the other is data, and that's digitally transmitted, hence you only need the one connection on it. Um, and that can talk to not only the device itself, but also the charger. Um, and so you're saying moving forward, you have an internal diagnostic tool that can, can read your history about how much, how much use you've actually been giving your machine. For our internal use and for our service centers, we are working on a reader, on a data reader that means so we can have a look how often batteries are charged, under which conditions they're worked and used, if they uh, were really stressed under their, under their job, sites, uh, on the job sites or is they're on a lower currency, a uh, workload of lower currencies. Mm -hmm. So everything is in the computer and we can read it and that's can tell you everything It's about really it. clever. It's like with a modern, if you, if you buy a modern car like an Audi or something like that, you go to the dealership for a service, you hand them your key, and they can plug the key into the reader, and they know an awful lot about you. It's very clever. So this is a sort of monitoring of details, make sure you behave yourself. Um, and, and the batteries itself, the one concern that a lot of people seem to have is, oh, it's never going to be as powerful as mains. They always say that this machine is never going to be as powerful as a corded machine. Um, and that's not true, is it? That's not really true, because of the combination of an EC motor together with the batteries and the right gear drives, you can get more or less a similar or the same performance as a corded tool. That it's not really a big difference between. And because of the combination of both uh, the EC motor and the lithium ion cells, you can work continuously without interruptions, as you know from the corded tools. Mm -hmm. So it works, and the nice thing is, is what, what I would call the uh, durability curve almost. I'm sure that's definitely not the right term to use, but if you imagine in the old days when you had a filament torch with an alkaline battery and you turned it on and as the battery went down it got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, but it would last for ages. This one, uh, when you first turn it on for the first couple of minutes, it peaks high, perhaps a little bit higher than the 18 volts it puts there, and then it goes down, but then it plateaus. It plateaus like the torque curve of a modern twin turbo petrol engine, I would yeah, say. Yeah, up to the end, up to the end, and it's perhaps a rest of 5%. That's it. And that it's the, the rest of the, the charge that it's what I need to, um, to recharge again. Mm. So it protects also the last 5% of the battery charge for themselves. Exactly. So if you remember in the old days, you had nickel cadmium batteries, you had to bring them right down before you charge them. Then we had nickel metal hydride, and you had to keep that at a certain level, ditto lead acid. These ones, the clever thing about lithium is the speed at which it can get rid of its capacity and then take it back on board. So um, I'm trying to think of an analogy. If, you, if you're filling up the petrol tank in the old days, the old batteries was like filling it through a narrow little straw, whereas this can, can use the petrol and be refilled like a Formula One car with a big, big tank on it. So that's part of the performance of them as well. Okay. Another big advantage is that you can recharge lithium ion all the time. You have not really to recharge the batteries completely and then to recharge them again. You can use and you can use, uh, put it into the charger whenever you think. Mm -hmm. So it's, if you've like got a break, phone as well. it could work. Yeah, yeah. it's like in, in the old days mobile phones when you yeah. had the nickel cadmiums mm -hmm. again, yeah. you know, and the, and the blackberries or whatever they were, any brand, um, that would last 30 seconds. Um, but these ones, you know, you put your phone on charge when you get into the car, when you go to the house, whatever. And this works equally when you buy it from new, you don't need to go through a long charging cycle and be very careful about how you use it. So I think that's quite an important thing in terms of battery maintenance. And how many times can this be charged and discharged and offer, say, 95% performance? Yeah. Don't worry, if, 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 if you're one hour. Uh, for our batteries, you will have a warranty for 750 charges. And therefore, we will give you a three year warranty. But if you use it under the right conditions, and it means never recharge it to the end, never fill it up on a maximum, so you can charge them and use them. More often, more longer. Yeah. So easily a thousand units, a thousand wow. charges. Yes. So that's pretty good. And uh, people might be thinking, oh, a thousand times. Well, actually, you know, you may well be using this in combination with a corded tool, um, and you may well be having multiple batteries. And bear in mind, just because the battery has had its thousand charges, doesn't mean that the machine is, is wrong. You just get a different battery, and you can put them in. So that works really nicely. Um, and now the other clever bit about, well, there's lots of clever stuff about this. We've talked about gearboxes and stuff. I, I'm restraining Ralph here about talking about gearboxes because he got terribly excited. Um, but the one thing that we do want to talk about, and bearings as well, that was, that was a good conversation, um, is brushless motors. Now, tell me the difference, it's, it's quite an easy question, this, between the brushless motors that we have in this and the older carbon brushed motors in terms of their attributes, their performance. There are a lot of advantages for the brushless motors because one of the first is you're 30% shorter of a, and the size of the motor is shorter and smaller than a similar brush motor performance-wise. 
So therefore you can um, use smaller motors for smaller housings for a better handling. Um, the service fly fighter tool itself, it's 10 times higher and you can save the time for changing the brushes and for other services that it's not possible and necessary. And the efficiency of the energy of the batteries is 65% uh, higher than on the old battery um, technologies. So the answer is all the energy that's stored in the battery can more efficiently be put out yeah. and 65% more efficient. So even if you're looking at the number of watts going in to a mains machine compared to the watts going into here, because this can make more per watt than a, than a brush machine, a brush motor. The, the EC motor is exactly taking the performance and the, uh, the, currents, the currency they really need for the application in this situation exactly on the second. And that is a big difference to the, uh, to the brush motors. The brush motors, they are running always on the same currency level, but where by a monitored moni uh, motor unit or EC motor, it takes exactly what they need, not more, no less. So really, in, in essence, they're very, very clever pieces of kit. Um, and even the charger itself, you're talking about an active cooling system. There is one, and there is an active cooling system. One is in the charger, there is a separate fan only for, uh, for the batteries by themselves. And the batteries are protected by a very clever system. This system, we call it Keep Cool Technology. The Keep Cool, uh, cool Technology, it's like a cover, it's a special material. And the material, um, it's absorbing the temperature of the battery because every um, battery, lithium ion battery, they have got a um, a maximum a maximum temperature rate and that it's around about 70 degrees and they have to stop working. This will be monitored by the compressor, uh, by the uh, microprocessor. Uh, and this special material is t uh, absorbing all the temperatures, keep us all the same temperature level and make sure that all the currency and the voltage could be used for the application for the drive. And it's dead clever because this stuff actually it starts as a gel and then as it's heated up it turns into a liquid and I know it seems a little excessive fans in your charger and all the rest of it but um, as uh, if you follow the news at all lithium ion batteries um, I mean lithium itself is quite a fun chemical to play around with or an element to play around with it it can go pop if it's not if it's not protected so it is actually absolutely necessary so that we don't end up with you know destroyed detailers. There's everything, there's everything completely protected, that it's a maximum of the 70 degrees, then the currency flow is stopped and interrupted by, uh, by the computer ship, nothing happens, and also the charger is monitoring immediately the battery when you contact them. So it is uh, looking for the temperatures, it is looking for the situation, for every single situation, a battery single situation uh, of the full unit, mm -hmm. and if the uh, cells are becoming too hot or they are too hot, they were starting with a cooling system at first, bring them up to the right temperature and then you're starting charging again. Or if it becomes too cold in the winter time because you forgot it outside and it becomes too cold, it will heat it up before it starts. That's with charging, clever. Yeah, that it's really clever. That's clever, and, and you, the nice thing is you can leave it. In the old days, sometimes, particularly lead acid batteries, you would leave your old torch in the shed on, on charge, on a nine volt charger, and there'd be just a little concern that it might go wrong. But this one, because it's clever, it's monitoring, it's probably cleverer than you are, let's face it, um, you're totally safe in leaving it. Um, so anyway, we've briefly covered this. I appreciate we've gone on, but I was dead keen uh, to talk about the battery technology because it is so very clever. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thank you very much for watching, and we shall be on your screen soon again.